All right. So we are going back to a year and a half ago. Um, I've got Ariel Paldunas and Taylor. Say it. I ain't Quavis. Say it. Quavis. I was going. I'm going to get it right eventually. I just call you Taylor Q. <laughs> and it's a C. It's a C. C U E V A. And uh, Wesley said the same thing yesterday. So was, we just laughed about it. So, <clears throat> but yeah. So Ariel's been on a couple times. We talked about the um, the sense of smell. We've talked about um, tone training, but the first time she was on, we actually talked about her status where she's starting, you know, she's been to the military, she worked working dogs and coming from the sport dog world over to the hound world and what makes things click and how do we be, how are we successful? And, you know, they come down and hunt with me once or twice each year. I enjoy having them down and the progress they have made is to me, they're in the right direction, and it's it's come a long ways in a short time. But I think that also shows their dedication, their commitment, um, and we're going to talk about some of the stuff that they've done to get where they're at. So uh, thank you guys for having me over this evening, and maybe if the weather's permitting tomorrow, we can have at it again. They've been down a couple of days, and maybe we'll talk about those hunts too. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. So you guys just kind of fill me in. Um Let's run down the dogs real quick because I know, I know Ranger and Willie have been the the main. That's been the start, right? Mm-hmm. And y'all can talk about them and what you've got now, and we'll just go from there. Okay. Um, well, thank you for having us down and letting us come hunt with you. It's always a good time and excitement. I don't know. I think after the last couple of days, <laughs> Taylor, Taylor had excitement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the uh, yeah the mentorship we've gotten along the way has really uh, really helped us. I think that's mm-hmm. been a, I mean that's certainly one of the keys to success is surrounding yourself with the right people. So, um, so my dog lineup I started with Willie and Ledoux, uh, the two brothers. Um, what probably like eight ten months after Taylor got Ranger, and a couple of his dogs. So they're two and a half now. And then I bought a dog from Aaron and Chris in West Virginia. He's a little over three, and then I have a year and a half old Waylon um, that also came from Aaron and Chris's breeding. So Waylon, Cruz came from them, and then Willie and Ledoux are the two that I got from Kentucky that I raised them from about four months old. Mm-hmm. Uh, Waylon I raised from nine weeks old, and then Cruz we got a little bit older, and then Taylor has his walker dogs. So I have Ranger, uh, who's out of uh, he's out of West Virginia, and then. Uh, we get that's how we got all got we got started in this. Mm-hmm. I bought him as a puppy, and then I got volunteer at about ten months old, and he's the same age as Ranger, different breeding, but similar genetics. And from the same breeder in West Virginia, I've gotten Liberty, and Weatherly, and then I got a puppy off you, uh, who's seventeen. Mm-hmm. His name is seventeen. His name yeah. is seventeen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, when we was at that. When we was got together, uh, th- whatever day it was, Thursday, and I told Ch- Chelsea hadn't seen him, but I, I did a double take, and now you see why when I pulled out mm-hmm. Attica, like yep. they <laughs> look almost identical, don't they? They sure do. Yeah. Those genetics run strong. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope, and I hope they are like they're good. But um, yeah, he looks just like her. I mean, I was like, I didn't bring her today. Like, wait, and then it t- dawned on me. I was like, oh, that's his puppy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So now how does the, like, so let's get, how does the, now Ariel, you're hunting blue dogs yep. and Taylor, you're hunting walkers. Yes. How does that mix? Fine. <laughs> his, his walkers annoy me a little bit. Yeah. They're, 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 they're wound up quite a bit tighter. Than <laughs> Although I do have one blue dog that's wound, uh, but a, maybe not quite as much as your walkers. See, my theory is her mother has, uh, uh, collies, collies. And they're they're blue as well. Yeah, so. she has blue merle collies. I, mm. I like the color, but now that I've owned the blue dogs, I like that they can like hang their heads out of the box and you know their jowls flap in the wind, mm-hmm. and they're not, with the exception of one, they're not like constantly whining and amped up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you when you got Willie out the other day, and I've seen your dog several times, and I guess it just kind of filters through the back of my head and. Like the, I, I told you the coloration mm-hmm. he's got, I mean, uh, the dogs that you're hunting, the blue dogs that you're hunting, they've got good bone structure. They're put up right. They're not, they're not heavy. When mm-hmm. I say heavy, 
I, I think about the bloodhound type, you know, and I, you see that in some of the blue dogs, not all. They've got good legs, good feet, but he's colored up like some of the old Cameron dogs that I used to have. Mm-hmm. He's very dark, The you know, the pumpkin seeds over the eyes, which all of them have it, but um, it really stood out to me when I seen him. And like I said, I don't, I'm not colorblind. I've had them all. If you look at my pack now, I've got a couple of high tans and, most of my walker dogs are crossed up, even though they look like walkers. And, I mean, I've had some really good blue dogs, but I really like the way they're put together. Like, I I'm, I was impressed, actually. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I picked up, I caught Waylon and Cruz. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, they're they're good-looking hounds. Like, yeah, I mean, from me not knowing anything except I like the way they look and I'm going to try and find some that are bred to hunt, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I know... Willie and Ledoux being brothers, they look, I mean, they're like twins <laughs> from yeah. the movie. <laughs> That's yeah, what Dan DeVito like. and Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, I like the way they look. I know some people like the, you know, the heavier bone dogs. And uh, Cruz and Waylon are a little bit more houndy in mm-hmm. their, you know, their facial features. But they're still fast and athletic. So, I, you know, they, they keep up with the walkers and yeah, you know, I think they, they do a good job. So. Well, I mean, the way they're put up, they should. Like, they've got some good running gear under them. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, for me, and, I, and maybe and I think you and I have talked about, we probably talked about this off the record and stood on the podcast, but, you know, that's something that I look at. When I look at a dog, like, I look at his gait. I want to see how he carries himself. And, I, you know, I, he's got to be, he, I would like him to be nimble. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I want that dog to be able to, to get glide through the woods. And, I mean, those dogs are, are like that. Um and I didn't get a chance to look at all your, you know, of course I know Ranger and Weatherly because I've caught them and hunted with them. Liberty, I don't remember seeing her last year. Uh, she's probably. Oh no, no she, had, she, she had was a, hurt last she got, year. She got a she had a little hole. So, okay, yeah. yeah. So she I hadn't seen her. And of course the pup, you know, yeah. I, I I knew where he come from. Um, so yeah, I mean, the dogs are. If you would want to pick dogs out to run for me in my eyes, like. You could pick any one of your guys' dogs and take them and run them. Like that's that's that would be the first step for me. Yeah, uh, and I mean the amount of miles that we put on them. Sometimes I feel like they hold up well, and they, you know, they put miles on when they need to. So. Yeah. Yeah. Feet is a big thing for us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because we live, we we hunt a lot up in Northern Virginia. It's really rocky, so having good feet and not getting that torn up in that that lichen covered rock is is uh, really important. Yeah. All right. So. When y'all y'all started with pups, mm-hmm. and how old is how old are they now? How old is Ranger and Willie? Well, Ranger's uh, was three and three and a half in July. Yeah, and Willie turned two the end of May. End of May. Yep. Oh wow. Okay, so he's the same age as Houdini and Hart, basically. The yeah. first, yeah, the first litter out of mm-hmm. Spook, yeah, because they that's they were they were February, mm-hmm. so you're just a couple months younger. Yeah. Yeah. So how how have you got? I mean, I know we had talked about your struggles at the beginning. So, w- what have you went through, and where are you at, and what is your perspective? And that's a long conversation. Yeah, but, but go for it. Um, so I think as far as where we're at now, uh, I think this training season things really started to click. Um, and I think we were probably surprised by it too that like we're putting up bears consistently on our own with just our dogs. Which, not to take, I mean we owe a huge amount of our success to the people like you and Aaron and Chris that have let us hunt with them and helped us build our own dogs. But to see when your own dogs Mm -hmm. start putting up bears and and not just easy bears where we're going out and we're putting miles in and they're going out and finding tracks and packing up and, and treeing bears over, you know, five plus mile runs. Um, you know, that really started to click for us. The the beginning of training season was was rough because of the heat. Um, and we got on what we believe to be running bears. I mean, without checking it, we can't confirm, but the way it ran, I think we were pretty confident that they were just bears that didn't want a tree and it was hot and our dogs finally, you know, decided they had enough, but probably end of August. Yeah. As it started to cool down, our, 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 uh, our training season really turned around and, uh, I would say got pretty productive Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And then we took we went out into West Virginia a couple times. That didn't go as well. We're still not very good at rigging. Um, mm. 
but uh yeah that is the art we've lacked to, yeah. to master we, we walk hunt mostly um and then once uh the season came in first day we treed a nice well you know decent bear yeah. we let it we let it go and then had a couple good runs and and came down here so i think it's finally coming together i try not to be too i'm I say I'm realistic. He says I'm pessimistic, but I think I have an <laughs> optimistic view of, of where we're headed. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's a it's a upward project trajectory. Yeah. You know, trajectory. And I guess you, you're good at explaining. I think how we've happened to happen to uh, change our strategy and find more success. Yeah. So the strategy has been hunt bears where there are bears. <laughs> we're, we're from the Northern Virginia area, and we got hammered with the manch, mm -hmm. and it decimated populations. So in the county we hunt a lot in, or used to hunt a lot in, we were killing 50 to 65 bears a year. And in the last few years, we've only killed three to five. So we're hunting something that... Not us personally. Not right. us personally, but we're, we're out there trying to chase something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we moved venues and went elsewhere, where where you can look at those statistics and say, hey, they still have the same rate of harvest they did three years ago. Uh, we've, we've been met with a lot more success. We're able to chase them where there are. Yeah, and uh, limit our trash races. Yep. Um, I think now coyotes are our biggest challenge. I think it's everybody's <laughs> challenge. Like, I, yeah, I mean, it's so hard. I mean, your dogs will look so good during training season. And, you know, and we talked about this the other day. Me and Garrett had this conversation, you know, the, the females come in heat about midway through our season. And I think that plays a factor into mm -hmm. why our dogs do, do do what they do. I mean, I'll have one or two races a year. I mean, it's going to happen every year. I don't want it. I don't like it. And every time I see a coyote crossing the road, man, I'm putting my dogs out and, you know, doing that training, doing that extinction training. Like, mm -hmm. I, I want it to stop. But I'm still going to have it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's – I think everybody does, really. <laughs> And that's, uh, you know, I think we we had an issue with deer last year. I, I feel like we try to be fair with our assessment of our dogs and also be realistic about the issues we have. And last year, I think we realized we were having more trash races than we probably... Now that we've been on more bear this year and seeing how the dogs run when they're on bear and how they pack up and they stay together mm -hmm. and they don't split up, it's been very enlightening because now if they do get on something and they break up into groups or um, run certain patterns, or I, I think I'm, I've gotten pretty good about listening to their, their voices mm -hmm. and saying, yeah, the sound on that initial strike is the yep. big one. Yeah. Especially with my dogs. Yeah. Or if they're like, they're chasing a running deer that like yip, yip, yip barking. I, I won't, I won't correct them off of it, but in my head, I said, I'll say, you know, or I'll say it to Taylor, that doesn't sound right. I think they might have jumped a deer. And sometimes they, you know, they quit on their own. We have a couple dogs that are got, have gotten better about quitting. You know, Willie's gotten pretty good about checking the other ones. So I think learning our dogs over the last couple few seasons and uh, learning the nuances of their behavior and the nuances of how the game they run behave has helped us to have more success um, and also being realistic that, you know, every time they bark in the box, you know, that's, that's our, with rigging our challenges, my dogs are a lot better on the ground in the box. I've got a couple that will bark at trash and then they get the other ones going and there's a lot of stopping and are, should we let them go? Should we not? Maybe we'll let this one down and check it. Um, so I think not just thinking every time the dogs bark or every time they want to run, they're on bear, um, and being willing to tone them back if we think it's, it's wrong. Um, or if we see a deer run out, being willing to correct them and, and not let them get away with running trash. If we could see coyotes, that would be great. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's our one challenge. We've never seen a coyote. We've, one time we were able to hear them barking at the dogs and, knew that's what's going on but other times it's informed speculation yeah and i think that's been a nuance too is we've made a point to not correct them not correct them off not knowing yes. so if we can see the deer jump and run mm -hmm. 
we'll correct. If we don't, if we suspect, we'll tone and call them back to us. And that way they're taking a direction from us. And, you know, she's gotten her dog so she can call them off a tree. My dogs certainly aren't that uh, obedient, but uh, that's her that's her cup of tea. But that, then they're listening to me. They're following my directions. They're hunting for me versus like you did something wrong. Well, I, mm-hmm. I, I can't confirm it, but I still want to inspire that chase something. You know, that's 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 ultimately what we're there for. Yeah, is to get a get a dog race, get a race going. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things I want to follow up on what y'all just talk about. So let's go back to the rigging, mm-hmm. and I have this conversation with my group all the time, and their dogs will strike. And they'll put them down, and they, they'll run around the truck and then get back up on the truck. And I'm like, okay, have you checked them on deer, coyote, yada, yada, yada? Well, yeah, I could drive by deer, and they won't, even, they won't open. And, Eric, you, you're in the canine world. You, you know some of these training tactics, and you know how dogs operate in certain environments. Mm-hmm. And I place it as a contextual thing. My dogs on that truck know that I have control of them. They can't go nowhere. They're tied up. So me barking at this is not going to, it's not going to help, mm-hmm. but I can take my young dogs who never said a word, put them on the ground and you see that nose go up. You see that behavioral change and you know what they're thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's because I've released that constriction from them. I've got you contained. Now you're free to do your own thing. Mm-hmm. You're free to make your own decision. And those young dogs, nine out of 10 times will try to take that track. Mm-hmm. But when they're on the box, they don't have that option. And mm-hmm. dogs are not stupid. And I, I, I say that all the time. We'll put them down and see if they'll run them. No, they just don't bark at them. <laughs> and I'm the only one that does that. Like, yeah. I'll, I mean, I can't tell you the times this training season. I mean, I got Axe and Attica and Rogue are the three young dogs that I was really working on during training season. And I can't tell you the times that a deer crossed in front of me and I get them out of the box. Boom or they would be, um, I was rigging Attica more than Axe and Rogue. And I'd get her, I'd get her off. She'd never say a word. I'd get her off and I could see that body language change. Mm-hmm. And then I'd, you know, do my little training little episode and put them back in the box or put her back up on top, pet her up and go on. Mm-hmm. But I don't think enough people do that. And I think that causes, I think that causes a huge problem. And one of the other problems, and I know I talked about this in another podcast, so I'll hit on it really quick. If you pack your dogs consistently to dogs crossing the road, your dogs are going to strike other dogs mm-hmm. because you and I know how that scent works. After the first three or four dogs come through there, it gets weaker and mm-hmm. weaker and weaker, and you're smelling more dogs, not more bear. Mm-hmm. And just like in my training when I hide my narcotics, when I put the dope out, the first two or three dogs struggle finding it. Like, they're working. Mm-hmm. Like, they're working, they're working, they're working. The sixth dog comes in, runs straight to it, boom, sets, because he's picking up on the dog odor. Yeah. So he's shortcutting the process. And I don't think everybody sees it that way. I don't think they understand, like, how dogs work. Mm-hmm. So back that the rigging part, like, I think that's part of it is. So we, talk- we, spent, yeah. uh, we spent last winter in West Virginia every weekend in the snow. Ah. So that way we had a set case. Mm-hmm. We would see deer tracks out of the truck. Nothing. Nothing. We'd put the dogs down on it. They'd run it. We'd correct, bring them back, move on to the next one. And this would go on. I mean, we had days where we were rigging 60 miles doing this. Mm-hmm. Just case after case after case. You could see, oh, that's a fox. That one's, those are coyotes. Oh, we jumped deer here. They're running across the road every time. Because I was, I was doing what, you're, what most of the guys do is I had the dogs up on the box. I'd ride around my neighborhood. If they barked, I would correct them. And how many times were you like, oh, the dogs don't bark at the deer in my yard? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, like, <laughs> like it's not the same thing. And, and it's not the same thing. And, and her thing is, her big thing is context, just like you said. Mm-hmm. They know the context, they understand it 100%. You have to let them, give them the opportunity to make a decision for That's themselves right. Right. And, and make it right. So, and the other thing I notice is individually, so I, I was, uh, my young dog, Waylon, last season. I started him on raccoons, partly because I wasn't sure if I wanted to make him a bear dog. Or I mean, I couldn't help it. He's a bear dog now. But um, back then, I was like, maybe I want, want a coon dog. No. I, but anyway, I started him, and I was going out to the WMA, WMAs by my house. And uh, one guy that we know from the coon club uh, had said, hey, every evening there's deer that come out in this one field. So I'd drive down there, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night. 
um, and use my headlamp and look for deer eyes. And if there was deer out there, I didn't have a truck to rig out of at the time, but I'd go park, I'd take my dogs out and just walk them down the road and walk them through the field and see if they would strike the deer. Um, and then I'd usually take a drag or, um, it's not a real heavy raccoon area, but usually I'd take some kind of drag so then I could hopefully at least reward them on the scent that mm -hmm. I want them to, to follow. Um, but even that, I found they got wise to that pretty quickly. But as soon as we were together and we called, collared them up and we're driving down the road with all of our dogs, you know, they're in a different mindset and deer jump out and they're, they're whining and looking at them and we'd take them out, dump the box, sometimes walk them up. And I got a lot of this from, from talking to you is, mm -hmm. um, not, not making them feel like we're pushing them to do something wrong, but giving them the opportunity to make the mistake mm -hmm. and seeing, okay, are they, how far are they going to take this? Some of them would go 25, 50 yards and turn around on their own. Others were committed and being able to kind of give them the opportunity that looked as much like our, I want to say operational context from my training background, but you know, the context that we're going to have them performing in, um, make it as similar as possible to a bear hunt. So they're in that mindset and then no you're not allowed to chase deer um so i think we've come a long way um we still have some that if deer jump up in front of them th they just have more prey drive um but willie has seemed to be pretty good about not joining in um a couple of your dogs they've will... got two of my dogs they're getting more and more honest yeah. all the time. um and you can kind of tell i mean they're they'll be on a a bear track where they're kind of packing up and going together and then all of a sudden you hear them like scream and start yipping and barking and they split up. I'm like, oh, I think they pr probably jumped some deer and a couple of the dogs will go on and I'll say, well, I think those dogs are probably still on the bear and the rest jump some deer and they're you know, gallivanting. But, um, that hasn't happened too much this season. I think. No, we've got that pretty tuned up. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, um, a constant battle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, my old dogs now are, they'll be five after the first of the year, which are Spook and Kate, and then Trip was three, and then everything else is two and a half and under. And even, I mean, I've turned Spook this year already. I mean, the first week of season, I turned him in two or three races, um, and he told on him. Mm -hmm. But I turned him into one race, and he barked enough to us p to pack dogs, and we packed dogs, and it was, it was a cluster. Mm -hmm. And he turned to come back. Like he, after yeah. everything else got going, he was like, nah, and it was too late then. Got everyone else started. Yeah, I, I already started putting my young dogs in. So as soon as that happened, I did exactly what you said. I, I didn't shock them. I toned them, started yeah. bringing them back. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, you, I want to see it. Like, and we've talked about this a lot. Like, if I know, then okay. And if I don't know, I'm not guessing because mm -hmm. I can't, just like uh, Friday, I had two young dogs down and I, I don't know what they're doing. Like, they took off. I had no clue. I didn't stop them. I mean, I didn't try to stop them. But as soon as I could get spooked to them, and I put him in, and he started well, I mean, I knew then. And, I mean, most people would have probably started zapping them. Yeah. You know, and I – Well, even Thursday, you said there was some degree of uncertainty when yes. that bear got jumped and running. And, yeah. you know, you got to – you got to – I said, pack at your own risk, didn't I? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I said, pack at your own risk. It worked, though. It <laughs> yeah. worked. You know, and, and sometimes you just got to just go with that feeling. And Yeah, but it's a constant battle to navigate each dog and what they're doing, and each season brings a different challenge. I mean, each dog brings a different set of uh, a challenges. So, yeah, but y'all, I mean, like I said, in a short time, you know, in, what, two years, basically. Was last year y'all's first real year? Yeah. Because your everything was puppies. Yeah, because the first year it was yep. just young dogs. They, you know, they, I think they ran a lot of deer yeah. that season. Yeah. But. yeah, but when those but when those rays start busting up like that, yeah. like that's when you start scratching your head, going. Uh. And there's certainly been so the one of our first hunts where Willie treed the bear by himself, the the older cub. Yeah. Um. So the guy we hunt and uh, Andrew was he he's like. The speed he moves through the mountains is insane. And I'm pretty slow. Taylor's pretty quick, but Andrew will this put us fast. all to shame. Mm -hmm. So he was up ahead, and Willie, I think I had a few of my dogs off leash. They were all up ahead with him. And I know my dogs pretty well, so I know that they're not 
they're past the point of kind of running around chasing each other barking um but they kind of came running down the trail barking and he said oh they're just you know barking chasing each other and i said they don't do that Mm. (laughs) you know they're and the dogs that were there i felt pretty confident they were on something and then they all hooked off they took a trail to the left and then they went up into the woods and i said they're they're running something they're they're not just running around barking they don't they don't do that and they wouldn't have hooked off the um the trail like that so then kind of the the clump of dogs went and like kind of hooked up and, and willie went off by himself and i was like that that's really odd for him to to break off away from the rest of them, but the rest of them sound good. So Taylor and Andrew went to go chase the other dogs. And as we were still together when Willie, like, yeah, he, he came up, mm, heard it locate. Yeah, yeah. Treat, and I was like, well, I, I, you know, maybe he's got a raccoon. Like it, I still wasn't trusting him as much at that point to say like, oh, I don't know. Um, so I walked into him and everyone else went ahead and uh, Waylon actually wound up, circling back around and treeing with Willie and Willie's uh, Waylon's got a really beautiful voice too. And he hit the tree and same thing, like big locate and balling on the tree. I was like, man, they, they sound pretty good. And I mean, I climbed, I was sliding back down the hill to get to where they were. And I finally get there and there's a little, you know, small bear curled up up mm-hmm. there. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm really proud that my dog took that. And then the rest of them wound up uh, on, what was the sound? Another cub? Yeah. Sound a cub. Yeah. yeah. That, that was you know, kind of convoluted race. They, yeah, well, but but they, I mean, that was what, yeah. They stuck with five, it five, six miles, and they got it up. They yep. got that those two bears up, the um, two small ones, the big ones. I forgot how I got on that topic, but you were talking about, <laughs> um, you know, progress from last year to the, you know this year. Yeah, I think that was really the the first kind of like the big success that we had this year. That was like okay, you know, kind of starting to trust the dogs, and um, it's really amazing. I'll talk about Willie because I've seen the most change in him where he did some good things last year, but he was still so young. Like when we were down here, he mm-hmm. and another dog treed mm-hmm. that one bear. Um, but he, you know, he's still doing young dog stuff. So I wasn't really giving him much freedom. And um, he and his brother treed another bear uh, by themselves. They didn't start the race by themselves, but they wound up the only two. Um, oh, we were talking about dogs breaking up. There's some times where I see them break off and now I'm starting to say, I kind of know that Willie's probably not chasing trash. So maybe it's a split race or maybe uh Ranger's fast on the track, but he sometimes will. He'll, if, if it makes a sharp turn, he'll sometimes overrun. Yeah. Um, and there's been times that Ranger will go off one direction and Willie and Ledoux will go off another direction and, and, and learning to read them. Um, but, uh, I guess that brings me back to where you were talking about different detection dogs going into rooms after each other. I feel like being able to put all the picture, the pieces of the picture together and look at how the dogs sound and which dogs you know are on the track and how they run it and what the terrain is like. I'm terrible at knowing terrain features, but he's really good at reading a map and, and knowing where we're at and what the train looks like and um, being able to put all those p- pieces together and kind of build that picture of what do we think the dogs are doing and who should we follow? Um, I think I told who was chasing my dogs on Friday, Thursday, Friday. Me, me, um, me and Hot Rod. Yeah. Or Garrett, and, Garrett was there too. Um, they said, you know, Willie and Cruz split. Yeah. And I said, follow Willie. Willie. Yeah, yep. I just know that, you know, there I've <clears> seen <throat> tendencies over the season where, Cruz will split off on his own, and Willie, I mean, I don't want to say always, but consistently has the bear. Um, but I think it's t- taken a lot for us to get to that point where, like, you know, follow this dog, or this dog is doing this, or, you know, if that one didn't go, it's it's not good. And, and being able to kind of see the, why are they not rigging a track where a bunch of other dogs went through? Is it because there's not bear scent there, or is it because they're, um, you know, smelling the other dogs and not smelling the bear. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking a lot. No, you got it. Right. <laughs> Go for it. That's good. Well, I mean, you, you know, I'm sitting here listening to you, and you know, I, it took me years to get where you guys are out in too. Like, of course, the bear population one. Like when when I first started hunting, guys with with good hounds were catching five, six, seven bear a year. That's it. 
And, you know, I had one hound, and it took me, like I said, it took me numerous years to get to that point where you're at with my dog, my three dogs, treat a bear by theirself, and, you know, I still have that picture um, h- hanging in my basement of, of the dogs that did that because that was the starting point. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the end, but, and it's been a lot of trials and tribulations since then. I mean, I went through good dogs and bad dogs and, um, like I said, time changes a lot of things, but, you know, y'all accomplished a lot in a short amount of time. But I think, you know, Ariel, with your experience with handling dogs and I mean, Taylor, your, your, uh, drive. I've managed not to mess it up. Yeah. We were talking about that at, at breakfast, how I want to be able to do everything, but there are certain skills that I just lack that Taylor has. And I think that it's a good team. Yeah. It's yeah. a good team. Well, Very balanced. That's what it takes. <laughs> but, we, but we also, you know, we've reached out to the right people, I feel like. And, and her, connect, huge, her, yeah. her connections in the, in the dog training world has led us to, down roads to you. Uh, she's got a, a Aaron and Chris over in West Virginia, uh, whether it be a technical, Hey, how do we vet this? How do we, how do we fix, you know, they got a little scratch. What do we do to, Hey, this is a behavioral problem. How do we deal with this? And I mean, she has an incredible context in the working dog world, but how do we deal with this behavioral problem? We're going to try to correct in the hound world. We can reach out to somebody and say, and get different opinions and, and kind of figure out coalesce around what we're going to do. And it's hard. I mean, it's hard because, you know, like the conversation you and I was having yesterday, you know, you're sitting there thinking, okay, well, what's causing this? What's causing that? You know, I've got my own issues I'm trying to work out. And I've been doing this 30 years and 20 years in the police world. And it's still a different, it's a different thing that we don't deal with. Like you don't. And, you know, it's hard. It's hard. Like I said, if we, if, like I said, Aaron and I was talking yesterday, if we had the answer to this one question, we'd both be millionaires. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because we could market that stuff, baby, I'm telling you. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, and I, I, I still have people I talk to uh, with the issue that I'm having. Like, I've reached out to several dog, police dog trainers because uh, I want to know, what, you know, what they're thinking and, and what, what they think. And so – yeah, I mean, it don't matter what level you're on. you got to have somebody to talk to. And, and may, maybe if it's just to talk through, hey, well, what about this one? Maybe not this. And we'll just keep, you know, keep <clears throat> keep doing it. Uh, I mean, I, ha- I had a guy message me last night. Um, and, it's, I, and, and maybe if he's listening to the podcast, I'm not throwing you on the bus because it's a, it's a learning thing. But he was talking about um, his dog goes crazy when he turns the lights on in the house. Okay, well, what's flipping that trigger? Mm-hmm. Well, come to find out, he's feeding at nighttime. And I told him, I said, you've got to switch your feeding time. Mm-hmm. You're, triggering, you're triggering that dog. He thinks, you know, your classical conditioning. Yep. Light comes on, food goes in the bowl. Yep. He gets excited. So, you know, I try to work him through that. He's going to try to change the process that he's doing and see if that changes the issue. Mm-hmm. So it's something so simple. But again, I mean, just asking somebody else, yep. like, there, there's always a reason for that that trigger, I guess. Sometimes just someone asking the right questions helps bring you down the path of, oh, I can, I can answer or I could solve my own problem. I just wasn't asking the right questions. And then mm. I mean, there, I've had a number of conversations where whether it's talking to you or talking to Aaron, where I don't want to say I feel stupid, but I feel like, how did I not think of that? And you know, once someone else says it, I'm like that, that, is so smart, but yet so simple, you know, like I should have been able, but whether it's more experience or just someone asking the right questions, having seen it before, or just being able to have a sounding board. And we do that too. Um, but I think sometimes we almost think too much alike about certain things. Well, all my, all my dog training knowledge comes from her, you know, so I have very little, you know, it's, it's, it's all out of her bucket. I don't have any sort of alternative ideas. But you still do sometimes take me down roads I haven't thought of, or well, I, I might have, ask you. I, good, I would try to ask you a good question. <laughs> but. Yeah, I. But again, like I train dogs for a living. I've got a dog in my hand every day, and I'm the same way. Sometimes, I'm like, well, dang, you're so stupid. Why didn't you think of that? 
Like, you know, I have the opportunities, but like, I'm not a, like for me, you tell me or show me I'm on it. I got it. Don't have to tell me again, but look, maybe the forward thinking sometimes with me, um, that's probably a, a weakness of mine. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm pretty like right now where I've seen so many dogs over the years. Oh, I've seen that before. Try this or try that. But when it comes to some of the own, your own stuff, like I'm like, okay. And then somebody will mention one thing and I'm like, duh, mm -hmm. you know, why didn't I do that? So I do it. I mean, I do it all the time. <laughs> so what, uh, what's your biggest takeaway from for, before we get into our couple of hunts here in the last couple of days, what's, what's y'all's biggest takeaway with the progress that you've made? over the last year what is the most important thing okay you go ahead, you go ahead. We'll, we'll get both of you <laughs> um i mean taylor said it earlier that going to areas where i don't know that there's more bear than off game but that the likelihood of coming across a bear track is higher than minimal i mean we were really hunting areas where there's bears but not that many and mm -hmm. we're much more likely to run into a bunch of coyote or jump some deer and we have young dogs with yeah. a lot of drive um and we put them in the woods and if they're not finding bear they're yeah, uh, they're gonna run some yeah. they're gonna run some that's right um and also for me i don't like leading dogs in the woods mm -hmm. and i get incredibly frustrated when they're banging into me and tripping me and stepping on me um but having to gut through that sometimes to not let a bunch of young dogs be loose together because trouble you know, once yeah once they have the company <laughs> they're they're making bad yeah. decisions um I, you know i think those two aspects were you know we've got we've got dogs that have good genetics i think that have a lot of drive, they want to run game. Um, and also enlisting the help of, you know, I sent uh, a couple of my, we, you know, we sent a few of our dogs to Aaron and Chris to run for a month or so. Yeah, um, and don't, the reality is, is, is Virginia has such limited training mm -hmm. seasons. There are opportunities outside of Virginia for you to send your dog away for training and to put, get that young dog on 20 bears in two weeks. And they know, they know what they're looking for at that point. Like, that I hate, to, you know, I hate to sound like that, but you can, I can put in a ton of work, but I'm only putting it in two months and then, then another month in, in December versus I can get dogs out, you know, in, in the springtime and have them go into other States and yeah, you're, you're handing them off to somebody and that's scary. That's a very scary proposition. Cause, uh, I mean, all our dogs come in the house and they're, uh, they're, I mean, they're, they're working dogs. We understand mm -hmm. the risk, but, uh, you know, they're all valuable to us and you're, taking them to you know mm -hmm. uh, you have to trust them and yeah. they're going to do a dangerous job it's not even that we don't have trust in the people they're going to but just if we put them in a bad situation it's different than someone else not in a bad if we put them in a if we give them a job to do that there's inherent risk at least we're making that decision and we're taking that risk um but we send them to people that we felt were trustworthy and um you know whether it was they were running in the type of environment we were running in or they were just going somewhere where they were getting on a bunch of bears just to kind of get it in their head. This is what you're supposed to chase. Um, so that when we got them back from training, we were able to go into our seat. We tried to time it that we could go into training season pretty soon after mm -hmm. and fresh. have that, yeah, fresh in their yeah. head. Um, so, not, you know, not being afraid to ask for help and, and pay for help. I, I know that's not something that everyone is comfortable doing but um i think we felt like with our and i think there's only a certain amount you can do with that because a lot of those places we we've sent our dogs off to are in north carolina and they're running off bait piles and you don't want your dogs to show up on a bait pile take a hot track every time yeah. like like we're using that as a tool as they're when they're young yeah they've seen a few bears we're gonna send them off to say like hey this is this is what we want you to this is what we want you to run and then you know, and in those environments down in North Carolina, I think the, they're getting a lot of contact with bears. They're not just running and treeing. They're getting baited up. Uh, they're in bay ups and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Bears swim, mm -hmm. you know. So now we've got dogs. Uh, we were in West Virginia, and the bears, like, we've had 
braces go across the new river, you know, like swim in the river because mm -hmm. they know like, Hey, it might be on the other side. Mm -hmm. The tr track ends here at the water. We're going to go on the other side of the water. Yeah. Yep. And you know, it was just not, not things that, you know, we didn't start off with older experienced dogs in our pack, which I think that's something we thought back on that, you know, maybe we should have done that, but I think there's, there's a lot of, um, satisfaction in knowing like we've raised these dogs mm -hmm. from puppies. Um, we didn't do it a hundred percent ourselves. We did get some help with, you know, training and, um, being able to hunt with people that had experienced dogs. Um, but we know everything that went into these dogs. We know the, the good and the bad, their idiosyncrasies. So I think, you know, to get back to the original question, learning to read our dogs was, was huge too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to ask you, but you kind of answered that question. Mm -hmm. Like how, how do you like Eric, especially you, how do you feel when you let somebody else like take your dog? When I was younger in this, I used to do the same thing mm -hmm. and a lot of us because I didn't have time. Um, you know, I've let several people take and hunt my dog. My buddies in New York, that's different. Like, cause I like trust them, trust them. Mm -hmm. And when they sent their dogs to me, like it was my dog. Mm -hmm. I'm going to treat it like mine. I'm going to do the same thing, but I have also sent my dogs to some people that run, you know, that advertise. And I don't know, like I'm at the point now where, I don't hardly want anybody touching my dogs. And I don't mean like touching, but mm -hmm. like, yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I want them, I, I guess it's me because I'm the way I am. And I know that's a bad thing, but I want to do things a certain way. Like I'm structured in what I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I have, I seen a dog couple, well, he's dead now. So it's probably been five, six, seven, well, it was before Spook, so Spook and Kate will be five. So it's been at least over five years ago. You know, to, I sent a dog that I was on the fence about. He was okay, and I sent him up to, to a guy to hunt. And the guy took him and hunted him, and, you know, he'd done everything that you guys got the, the feedback and the videos. And he said he, he's an average dog. He said he, he goes, he does, but he's not going to blow the world up doing it. Um, and that's the last dog I've let go. And now I'm like, I've got so many dogs I could send – I could send three or four off, but I just can't let myself do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's just maybe me. That's me. Yep. So I think, uh, I have to compartmentalize mm -hmm. and one, I do a lot. I feel like I, I put a lot of thought into who I'm sending them to and, and trying to research and, um, look at other people that have sent their dogs and did they come back healthy and, are, you know, are they getting good feedback? Um, Aaron and Chris, I, I mm -hmm. have a friendship with. Um, I've, we've hunted with them. So there wasn't really any of any apprehension there just because I knew. And they hunt really similar to us. So I felt like um, our dogs were going to be in a similar environment, hunted similarly. And um, while I wasn't, I try not to bug people and say, like, oh, how's my dog doing? How's my dog mm -hmm. doing? But because I talk to Aaron regularly, um, we would chit chat and, and I, I had pretty consistent updates. Um, but we have also sent them to other trainers that do it as a, a business. And that was a little more difficult for me because I just had to shut off that part of my brain. That's like, are they okay? Are they going to feed them consistently? Are they going <laughs> to, are they going to be clean? Are they going to have, you know, shelter if, if the weather's bad or, you know, and I think even a bigger concern was I sent Willie who is not as great in the heat, um, in a warmer month. And I was like, you know, is he going to overheat? And, you know, is he going to, are they going to monitor him and make sure he's not running too hard? Cause I know he doesn't have a, a good regulation mm -hmm. on his own. Um, but I think there's just part of me that maybe it's just like, because I've been in the military and worked with military working dogs and, um, working dogs where I just say like, this is their job. I have to trust that if I'm sending them to someone, I'm making that decision and I have to trust that it's going to be okay. Um, and we were lucky enough that we, you know, we did get updates and, and, um, I felt comfortable with that enough to, we sent a couple rounds of dogs off. Um, and but. we have had, uh, people we haven't sent them to again. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say, and 
probably most people, uh, that particular trainer would, uh, most houndsmen would say, Oh, that dog was great. It didn't really meet our standard, you know? So we haven't sent dogs back there and, and I'm not gonna, you know, it's just, I might just have a slightly higher standard. Yeah, for, you know, like, yeah, it was more the, you know, I, I feel like having been in the training business updating, you know, let us know how the dog is doing every once in a while mm-hmm. is, uh, and, and she, she trained pet dogs for a short time and the, the amount of interaction that a pet dog owner has to have with you. Yes. You're weighing it every day to make sure to put it in a log to make sure it hasn't lost a certain amount of weight because yeah. if it loses weight, but you know, certainly don't expect, we're that. not expecting that. We just, you know, at the end of the week, we're going to, Hey, this is how things this are going. going on. Yeah. 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 Well, like I said, I think a lot of people do that and I guess I'm, you know, I'm blessed right now where I do, I can travel. I'm blessed. And I've made a lot of connections and have a lot of friends and I can keep my dogs just busy enough that, that I don't, but, um, no, that's a good thing. I mean, I know a lot of guys do it. Um, and if it gives your dog, a, like you said, you timed it and that's what I do. Like I like to go to New York right before our season comes in. That gives my dogs, like I know they're in the right frame of mind when season's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. They'll come back and boom, here we go. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think uh, one other thing that was really important to me is I want an honest assessment. Yeah. Don't, you know, don't blow smoke up my yeah. rear. You know, tell me if my dog is worth keeping or not. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't want to waste time by someone saying like, oh, yeah, your dog is doing great. And, you know, tree and every bear he sees. Like, I don't, I don't expect miracles. I just want to know whether or not my, you know, how my dog performs and what, what you see. So that way I can take that back. And I, I feel like that was, um, it was good to have those experiences where I can get an honest assessment. I can build an honest picture of what my dog is doing. So that way when we go back and we start our season, I can mm-hmm. apply what, what I know. How about you, Taylor? What do you think? I think uh, a lot of you guys have been doing this for generations. So there's no reason to invent a wheel. <laughs> there, there is a path out there yeah. and you have to find somebody who hunts like you do and who has the same sort of ethic training structure personality you do seek that person out and, and try to find, get a mentor out of that person. And, yeah. and, uh, yeah, you don't need to, you don't like, you don't have to be the hero who's out there trying to do it every day by ourselves, whether it be genetics, training techniques, equipment, what you want your box to look like. There's a million things that everybody's already thought out. Don't like ask somebody like, Hey, how do you do this? Or what do you want that to look like? Or when this happens, what should I do? Or, Hey, here's a picture of the track on my Garmin. What do you think? This is how it went. And I think hounds running hounds has been the most family oriented sport I've ever been involved in. Everybody seems to be very welcoming and taking you in as long as you're approaching from an honest Hey, can you help me? I'm being humble. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to put in the hard work. I just don't know what the next step is, or I don't know how do I progress. So <clears throat> that would be my, you know, my, my takeaway is try to find the right people. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of good people out there for sure. Yeah. Like I said, I've met some of my best and closest friends and I mean, I, like I said, I wouldn't change it for the world really. So well, let's dive in. Let's take a quick 10, 15 minutes here and talk about this week. Um, you guys come down and kind of throwed y'all right in the fire. <laughs> That's get, what Taylor's good at. Uh, uh, hey, I'm telling you right now, I am so happy that he was where he was at Thursday mm-hmm. because I was way out of pocket. There's no way I could get there. And Bugs, I'm sorry, but you got to step it up, man. You got to walk faster. <laughs> like well, you. we were together and he just – Took off running down, off trail down the hill. I said, where are you going? The trail trail goes to them. He's like, this is the quickest way. Just bushwhack. So that's why I was not with him because I can't get through the woods as quickly as Taylor can. No, you can scoot. But I mean, well, let's, so you and I caught a bear in a hole about the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You caught one on one side. I had a little old female in a hole on the other side. And then Hunter and Greg had another hole so we had three holes within an hour yep everybody's like hey it's in a hole it's in a <laughs> hole yeah um and then you know we'll go back to what taylor was talking about earlier so we get the dogs um 
get the dogs out and we go on to go hunting because we still have a couple miles to hunt out and and i know you guys like to walk too i know riding around in trucks not your thing um but anyway we walked the track we kept on what we kept hunting this area and bob was with me and i told bob i said bob i said we're getting ready to get in a really good spot right here and he's like yeah and i'm like yeah this is this is a really good area across these next couple ridges and we got through about the second ridge and spook had went down in a holler a couple hundred yards and y'all never heard the beginning of it did you no 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 um because y'all where y'all were up so high i thought y'all would but anyway spook opened a couple times i had spook and kate houdini and hart loose i had four dogs loose and i had two dogs on the lead with me and um spook opened enough for me to send trip i sent trip and it got quiet and about the time trip got there like he just come out of the other end of there just smoking like yo, 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 yo. I mean just gone and then Kate Houdini I don't remember who opened what but they opened up Bob sent a dog or two well he had two dogs so he sent his and I still had Rogue on lead and Trip just kind of pulled out of there and that's when they were asking me and I'm like I don't know like I'm not 100% behind him yet like mm-hmm. he does a good job he'll treat bear by himself but I've also had several off races so he's not 100 percent broke and kate was opening and i hollered back and i said well kate's in there and bob's like what are we gonna do i said well we're gonna try to catch up with him and anyway about that time i was like well if it's junk i'm gonna put him into it too so i sent rogue and rogue went down there and as soon as he hit where their track was i mean he was just he he's a chop mouth dog i mean he just left out of there and it wasn't just a short time did y'all hear him coming underneath you yeah, we heard them as they came as they came through the first little uh, uh, called tributary down into the main creek. Yeah, we did hear it. Yeah, okay. As they entered into there, and then they pulled up. Yep, and you heard all that. Yeah, heard all that. Yeah, and then wasn't I mean it wasn't long. Hunter was screaming that they you know bear, they run a bear right out in front of them, um, and so they'd packed it up and it made a loop in that area and come back down uh, and split and started up on where you guys were at thank the lord you were over there and run it basically right up in your lap right yeah, well, yep <laughs> i came right down into it and they came right up to me so yeah. we, we met in the middle and and uh yeah it, it wasn't uh wasn't in the mood for training i'll, I'll give it that they what it wasn't in the mood for a train so it was no it, it was on the ground and uh yeah we that's your biggest bear yeah, oh yeah. yeah yeah that's probably honestly it's probably the biggest one i've seen Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So what, what was it? 323, 324? 323. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice bear. Nice big bear on the ground. Um, I had a couple dogs with Hol- Kate and Spoo- or Kate and Trip both had. Trip always gets holes in him. Like, I hate it. Like, if it's on the ground, he's going to come out with his hind end with holes. And Kate got it in the front shoulder. So not too bad. You said all the dogs looked to hell. I was like, okay, thank the Lord. <laughs> Uh, so the dog, well, if you hadn't have been there, it could have been a lot worse. That it had just kept going up, 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 uphill through that laurel, and mm-hmm. it was so steep. I don't know how you'd ever gotten in front of it. We wouldn't have. No, it's... no. Like you, you were in the right place at the right time. Like, and you, I mean, I, I can't climb. I can go. I go, but I can't make time up that stuff. I'm, I'm a big guy like you, so I've got, <laughs> I've got downhill. I can go to like a meteorite downhill, but I can like uphill is not my, not my. Yeah, it was tough. Job. So, no, we was able to take a nice, nice bear um, Thursday. Um, so, that was a great hunt. Um, and then, what was the next day? Friday. That was the day my dogs kind of split, went, yeah. Yeah, split up. Yeah, I'd still not, like, I'd really like to know where, like, I'd, I'd have loved to be in there got in front of Willie. Yeah. Like, I really would have. Um, yeah, I picked up Waylon and Cruz and... Ledoux ended up with another group. Yeah. Waylon, I, you know, I think he went, he followed Cruz, and then when Cruz realized that, or Cruz decided he, he was not going the way he wanted to go, Waylon just stopped, and luckily he just kind of stayed in the same spot, so he was easy to catch. And um, I don't know what, I, I think Cruz doesn't like not being, he doesn't like not being the lead dog. Is that mm-hmm. double negative? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if he split off and found something on his own and then stopped when he got to the road or what happened, but uh, my confidence lately has been in, in Willie mm-hmm. that if if they split and Willie's still going and barking, um, he's not a dog that barks lost. Um, 
So. Well, no, Garrett said he heard him like the whole evening before you got there. Yeah. 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 Garrett said he could hear him. And you said he was barking when I mean he was barking when I got there. He was. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I was so. And Hot Rod was on the road. other side. Yeah. And he said he, you know, they were hope he was hoping they'd bring he'd bring whatever. Oh, he had a drop right in y'all's lap. Yeah. Yeah. For but, um, sure. So I, you know, without seeing it, who you knows? Know, but yeah. Um. Yeah. So they had, they put in a lot of miles. <laughs> yes, they did. They covered. I mean, he covered two. He covered two mountain ranges. Mm-hmm. He like, he. He was the dog that swam the New River, and I got across, when we were in West Virginia, I, I got across the river, and he was treed for a little while, and then moved on, and he got cliffed out, mm-hmm. and I had to figure out how to get down a cliff to get him, but you know, he, he puts in miles when he's running something, which yeah. isn't always good, because sometimes the other dogs don't stick with him. But. Yeah, but you know, it's kind of like, you know, spook. I, you want you want four more of those dogs. Yeah. You want you, that's your standard. Like I, I want a dog that don't quit. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you quit when I catch you, or you can't go no more. Mm-hmm. Um, and de- my pack's definitely not that way. I mean, not not at all. But that would be like what I would be looking for. Yeah. Like just like y'all catching him the other day. Like that's what I want. I mean, that was it was up in the e. It was. I had to go somewhere. Oh, I had to go pick up the key. Like I had, yeah, it was after school. Like it was, yeah, it was four o'clock or three, so. four o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that was, y'all started out that morning. Yeah. That one bear, they, he and Cruz were on for like, what, eight, nine hours or something. And last yeah. Western. Yeah. Last yeah. winter. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. They were walking. We, and we saw it. They, they had it bait up at one point and it took off again and they took off and we mm-hmm. didn't get them caught until like 1130 at night. True. They haven't been there, done that. So. And then yesterday, Taylor, you run yourself to death yesterday. I mean, they, we had dogs, had dogs in five different directions. Bear running, bear whipped us yesterday. Yeah, that was, that was uh, every. I mean, they were just left and right. Yeah, yeah. We packed uh, Allie, which is one of the A litter. She ran a bear across the road, so we went up and turned some young dogs on it, and they got cliffed out. So here's a learning lesson for me yesterday. So I, I had a bunch of young dogs. I only turned out. Heart, Rogue, and Sassy. So Sassy's my ten month old. Mm-hmm. Rogue's my year and a half, and then in Heart, that's the only dogs that turned out. Well, when they got treed, um, we started into them. Well, Sassy left, and I, of course she's not been staying. She's only stayed on two trees so far, mm-hmm. and that kind of worried me. And I probably made a mistake here. Is she left, and she went about six, seven, seven hundred yards away from them. And I started toning her. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, so let this play through. I get about halfway the tree, and Rogue is moving, and I'm like, "What in the world? Like he's ne- like he's pretty much stay put." Mm-hmm. And anyway, we get in there. And guess what? They're ledged out, and I'm not sure if I stopped Sass from going the same way the bear did. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't say that it is or didn't. But the bear crossed the road, force packed it. Mm-hmm. He crossed right above where we were at, force yeah. packed it, and ended up treeing it over on the other side of the mountain. Um, but I learned like that was a like that was the first time I'd seen the young dogs kind of scatter like that at a tree. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I'm thinking bad thoughts. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking something rough. Like what's going on in there? Why is the dogs leaving? Come to find out, they were they were ledged out, and they were they just couldn't. They was just moving. So I get it. It was a learning thing. So next time I see that, I'll I may have a better idea of what's happening. Mm-hmm. So that was a learning thing for me yesterday on young dogs. Mm-hmm. And then y'all ended up getting with Wes and making a lord a heck of a round in there with him. Yeah, that dog, that rip dog, is really uh, real tough. I mean, it, it it ran long. It chased that bear a long ways by itself. Rumor. Yeah. Rumor did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a dog to be proud of. Yeah. Yeah. No, good for her. I mean, she'll run anything like that. But if he can get her, if he can get her straightened out, man, that's. I mean, it's hard to find. Like I told you, when you go down in that country and come back up out of there, that's a feat. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know how many miles that was, but it was long ways. And, yeah, and she was by herself the mm-hmm. whole way. And uh, like you said, it was. Yeah. Some thick spots in there, tough ground. Yeah. So we were able to get in there and get it packed onto it, and help her out a little bit. And, yeah, and, you uh, did. You helped her get and, things squared away. That was and made it easy that she come right back to the trucks too. Oh, right. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's so. a convenient spot to get to. Yeah. So what's rest y'all seasons look like? Um, depending on weather, uh, Taylor forgot to take tomorrow off. So, yeah. Well, um, but I'll stick around and hunt if you guys are hunting. And then... Um, oh, you're leaving this evening? Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. And then... Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to hunt Saturday, but I've got to travel up to go see my family for Christmas. Not have to. I want to. Mm -hmm. Um, And probably try and get a couple days in towards the end of the season. And then we we still like to go into West Virginia, um, even though we know the bears are probably denned up. I mean, we found that pretty big one last year that Willie and Cruz jumped. Um, And if nothing else, I think good for exercising the dogs and going out and looking for tracks to proof them on Mm -hmm. talked about maybe trying to find some bobcat tracks we've got some areas that we've seen cats on camera we've got some aspirations going out west for mountain lions oh so So we'd like to try to maybe a couple dogs try to get some dogs sharp on cats yeah and go from there um we don't want to put all the dogs on it because we want to have some that well i was gonna say how are you gonna handle that when you get to not knowing what you're treeing well so (sighs) cruz has already been on bobcats uh-huh. um but i i want to keep willie dedicated bear dog i think he's but with the with the way cruz acts i don't think i'd have a problem switching him over and just hunting him on cats that's kind of what i was th- i mean he doesn't seem like he wants to be with a bunch of other dogs mm-hmm. if there's a really hot track um and you know they're they're right on the bear or it's a walking bear he's in there you know he's gotten scratched up he he's not afraid to be in there with the pack Mm -hmm. but he just seemed even at the tree he just sits back and and doesn't bark a lot just locks up on the bear like he wants to track track stuff and trail stuff and um, be alone so i think maybe if um he does you know if we can it's more us if we can learn some new skills and put him on cats um that might be a better outlet for him Mm -hmm. um just, and I don't think he and Ranger really like hunting together. He doesn't like Willie that much. He, he hunts better with Willie, but lately he's been breaking off from Willie. So, uh, mm. yeah. And Taylor's got a couple dogs he's thinking about maybe putting on cats too. So, yep. And then hopefully it'll warm up enough in March that we can maybe get on some more bears in West Virginia before we can't hunt there anymore. Yeah. Train, train there anymore. Yeah. Well, nice. Yeah, when, and that's something I think we need to put into perspective before we get off here. But you guys are really only hunting weekends. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing. You're not, you know, you're not like, I, you know, I take the month of September and December off. You guys are hunting when you can and take a vacation mm-hmm. to go here or go to West Virginia. But you guys are basically hunting Saturdays and Sundays. Mm-hmm. So that makes the, you know, where you're at now, um, even better because the the shorter amount of hunting time that you guys have get so yeah. i mean i think that's something that's important for people to hear is you're doing it on weekends and that plays into you sending your dogs to somebody to hunt because that's valuable time that you guys d- don't get mm-hmm. absolutely and we we have multiple treadmills mm-hmm. we're out i mean it's not like our dogs are <clears throat> sitting in a kennel not doing anything we try to keep our dogs active and fit and moving. And then that way, when we do get the opportunities, they're not, they're in shape when it's, when it's ready, yeah. when it's time to go. Mm-hmm. No, that's right. And, you know, I think we, we had to make the commitment to, we're going to have to travel to places that we want to hunt. Um, you know, make some sacrifices. Like I don't train gamble during hunting season because I know that, you know, we're going to be getting up and driving two to three hours to our normal probably about two two and a half hours to where we normally hunt um and then the amount of miles we put in like i said i mean taylor is like a lot of times i'm like just go ahead (laughs) you know he (laughs) he moves through the mountains like you know a ninja yeah Yeah. i'm just like working my way behind and then get up and do it again the next day even though we put in you know 10 plus miles one day so it's a it's definitely a commitment Counting the days, counting the days. But well, I appreciate you guys coming on, and like I said, I really enjoy you coming down. The rest of the group enjoys it, so hopefully it'll just continue and grow from there. So, all right, guys. Until the next time, 
Thank you for helping us teach, train, and learn. Thank you. Thank you.